we can all agree 2020 was a crap year. Particularly for my 29 family. We lost our dad beginning of the year after he had a heart attack, and my little brother, 12, had no one to take care of him. Our mom died when he was three, so our dad was all we had left. I fought for custody and was appointed as legal guardian. Honestly it hasn't been easy. We're still adjusting to these life changes, and my brother is taking it the hardest. For months he was just not himself. Bad attitude, lashing out. I got him in therapy because I knew he was just hurting, plus stress of pandemic. His behavior has improved so much since then, even if sometimes there's days where he's withdrawn. Days before Christmas he was feeling sad since it was our first holiday without dad. That day, he asked to be left alone. We had a talk to discuss his feelings, and I gave him his space after that. My girlfriend was over that day and I went out to buy groceries. When I got back my brother was out of his room and helping out. I didn't think anything of it at the time. Yesterday my brother and I were out having some guy time before going back home to get ready for New Year's Eve. My brother opened up about how grateful he is for everything, and he hopes that I don't change my mind about taking care of him. I asked why he think that, and he told me what happened. That day when I was out my girlfriend went to his room to tell him he needs to change his attitude and stop moping, her exact words, because he should be grateful I'm taking care of him at all. And that we can still hand him over to the state if we wanted to. I was furious about this and had to reassure him that was never gonna happen because he really was worried about it. We went home, I confronted my girlfriend and she didn't deny it. She told me it's true and there was nothing wrong with telling him to stop acting like that when he should be grateful I gave up my life to take care of him. And the thing about giving him up isn't that big of a deal to her because it's not like I'll actually do it. I said she still scared him with that threat and told her to leave my apartment because honestly, I was far too mad and because I didn't want her to be near him right now. She started crying, there was more fighting, but she left in the end. It was just me and my brother for New Year's. Since last night I've been bombarded with calls from all our friends for kicking her out knowing she has no family and nobody else to spend the holiday with. Everyone has sided with her, and even my best friend says I may have overreacted by making her leave when she probably thought she was helping. They've heard my side of the story but still think I was an idiot for making her cry and spending the new year alone. I'm having trouble seeing how I could be so here I am looking for internet strangers to weigh in on this. Not the idiot, your, hopefully, ex-girlfriend certainly is, though. She waited until you were out of the house and she could verbally, emotionally, and mentally abuse your brother without interference. Your friends have no clue how much losing one parent affects children, let alone both in a short period, not even getting into the mental and emotional trauma being physically cut off from friends and activities and possibly moving in with you and having to change schools without being able to develop new friendships before going virtual due to the hellscape of the past nine months. You need better friends. You are a great person and brother for stepping up. If he and you aren't already in grief therapy, look into it, especially for him, and the first person may not be the best fit. Don't listen to anyone else in your friend group. What she did was beyond cruel to your little brother. For God's sake, the two of you have lost both of your parents, you have my deepest condolences. People process grief in different ways. It doesn't just magically disappear. He's 12, he likely hasn't learned how to properly regulate his emotions, and hormones don't help. You did the right thing by understand he was hurting and getting him into therapy. You reassured him that you would never get rid of him. You're an awesome brother. Your girlfriend, at this point, would be an ex. I don't care if she had no one to spend the holidays with. She was unnecessarily cruel to a child. Anyone that sides with her is, in my opinion, an idiot. You didn't overreact. You acted the way you should have. Not the idiot. I'd have dumped her the second she confirmed what she said. You made the right choice for both you and your brother, stick to it. She showed you she'll make cruel empty threats to get away, and that would have turned on you sooner rather than later, she was testing the waters bullying your brother when she thought she was safe. Please tell your brother he did right to tell you and affirm that he hasn't forced you to give up life and that you're proud of where his attitude is right now. Update. Okay wow this has gotten a ton of feedback. Thanks everyone for your kind and encouraging words. I might not have replied to a lot of the comments that made me smile, but just know that I read and appreciate them. 
I know I only posted this a few hours ago, but I've had a day to clear my head and really think about this. I talked to my brother because I wanted to know if she said anything else to him. Thankfully she hasn't, and we had another serious chat to remind him everything she told him is completely false. I would never in a million years give him up, and that shouldn't have been put in his head. Another thing I told him was that I'm grateful he's here with me. Without him I wouldn't have made it through the year and I thanked him for giving me that strength to keep going. Someone who DM apostrophe D me suggested reassuring him that he's not somehow ruining my life in case he feels any guilt for what she told him. Thank you for that suggestion. Now, I know you were all waiting on this news. Yes, I did break up with her. Thinking about what a lot of you said, talking to my brother about how this made him feel, and my own thoughts about how badly she acted, I decided that's not someone I want around me or him. I can't risk her doing something like this again and ruining any progress he makes in therapy. I know many of you think I should have done it on the spot, but I wanted to make this decision with a clear head and not when my emotions were extremely high. She came by my place earlier and we talked outside. Her reaction was as bad as you'd expect and she still believed she did nothing wrong even after I explained it all to her. There was just no making her understand and I told her it was over. I gave her a couple of her things that were lying around my apartment and she left. My phone started going off like an hour later, so I had to put it on do not disturb. That's all the drama I could handle for one night. I'll deal with my friend some other time. Honestly, I'm exhausted. Mentally and emotionally drained right now. I think this weekend we'll do something to get our minds off this. I definitely need it after everything and I know my brother does too. It's been a hard year already without all this extra drama. Anyway sorry for the really long update you guys, but I didn't want to leave anyone hanging. I'm sure more comments will keep coming. I probably won't be sleeping much tonight, so I'll keep my mind busy by reading and replying to more of you. Thanks again for the support. What a horrible way to start the new year, but here's hoping for better things. My wife and I had a pretty normal marriage. No kids, both employed and really happy together. For 99% of our relationship we didn't have any major problems, we made time for each other, so on and so forth. She recently went away with her friend for a girl's trip. The first two days after she came back everything was fine, and on the third we went to dinner with this friend and her boyfriend. Dinner went well, came home and went to bed. Wife woke me up in the middle of the night crying saying there was something she had to tell me. Long story short, she had cheated on me the entire trip, and her friend had cheated on her boyfriend as well, apparently the dinner together caused her to have an attack of conscience, because she messaged my wife after I had fallen asleep telling her that she was going to come clean to her partner, and my wife had to tell me as well or she would. We talked, yelled, cried. I spent most of the night sick. Told me it was just a horribly stupid decision and was perfectly happy with me, which honestly makes it worse. Why risk a happy marriage for an affair? It wasn't my fault, the usual. I've been staying at my sister's place while we figure out the divorce. Before this went down, she had been scheduled for tests and scans for what we thought were relatively non serious health problems. Turns out we were wrong, as I was just contacted last week by her cousin telling me a scan revealed cancer. I got in touch with my wife and we talked, she proved her diagnosis and filled me in on some details. She was understandably terrified and begged me to come back, to talk to her, hug her, give her a chance, to be there with her. I told her I wished her all the best, I'm very sorry for what she's going through and know she's strong enough to make it through, but while I'd help financially from a distance, I wasn't physically going back. They, not her, have been harassing me, telling me to man up and go to her. My own friends are split 50-50. I don't want to go back. Before anyone pulls that this is probably why she cheated. Card, no. We had a good marriage, we had a sit-down talk every month to discuss anything wrong. We were solid. She just chose to take a chance on a quick thrill, despite knowing cheating is a 100% dealbreaker for me. She never even planned to tell me until her friend forced her. Well I certainly don't think anyone deserves this and I am sorry it happened to her, in my opinion her diagnosis doesn't change our situation. I feel it'll be harder on both of us with me being there knowing I won't forgive her when it's over. It feels like prolonging the inevitable, and I feel like my obligation to her ended when she chose to betray our marriage. She has family and friends so she isn't alone. 
I care about the woman I thought I married, but I no longer love who she turned out to be, so I feel it'd be unfair to both of us for me to be there. I'm not trying to punish her, my heart just isn't in it anymore. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, this is something I've struggled with myself for a while and needs to be said. You are not responsible for the happiness of another especially at the cost of your own, you deserve to be happy, you deserve to be loved and cared for and treated right. It's truly unfortunate what has happened to her, but understand that you aren't obligated to run back and comfort her and pretend like nothing happened, you're already helping her situation financially and honestly that's more than some people would even do. You're a good person OP, stay strong and put your own happiness first. Not the idiot. However, and this is a big however. Infidelity does happen in great marriage, and strong relationships can get through it. Not saying you're obligated to work through it. But, if you really love her, and love the life you have with her then I would strongly consider attempting to work through it. Infidelity sometimes happens, because someone is missing something in the relationship. Identifying that, fixing it and forgiving can leave a relationship in a better place than it was per cheating. No one could expect you to turn on a dime and support this woman emotionally, after telling you that she wasn't emotionally concerned enough for you not cheat. Yes you can have a range of emotions and be concerned for her well-being. Yes you can show it in different ways. If you feel like you can't take the emotional hit by going above and beyond to support this woman, then don't. It's not good for you. The insincerity of all that isn't good for her either. There is kindness in that cruelty. I was adopted when I was 5 years old by a couple who were 28 and 30 at the time. They had no other children. This past year, two things happened. My adoptive father was diagnosed with cancer, and my adoptive mother got pregnant for the first time in decades. My adoptive mother always thought she was infertile, but apparently her miracle had arrived. She carried on with her pregnancy despite his cancer and her age. She died in childbirth, and my adoptive father followed her two months later which left me with an infant baby sister and two dead parents. My family is telling me that this is my duty, that I'm not a child or incapable, and of course they're not offering to take her in at all. They've all vehemently refused. Everyone is furious that I used my adoptive parents' resources, and now that it's time to reciprocate I'm taking the easy way out. They say I'm the right age to have a child anyway, and that it's just like if I had love and gave birth to her. They've even brought up my fertility reducing medical conditions and say this is my chance. This isn't my child. I'm not ready to be a parent. I have graduated college, yes, but I still had dreams. I'm not in a financial, emotional, or mental place to raise a child, even if I kept every penny of the meager inheritance. I'm still single, and I want to be able to date and maybe even marry and have my own family one day. I'll never be able to do anything with this child anchoring me down. I consulted with lawyers, and they say I have the right to give this child up for adoption. I'm using an adoption agency. It's an unusual adoption, because I'm not attached or related to the child except legally, and I'm also splitting the inheritance 50-50 with my sister and giving it to the adoptive parents for her benefit, so they're gaining money by adopting this child. I picked a couple that my adoptive parents would have approved of, a mid-30s straight religious couple, as opposed to a 25-year-old bi-atheist, me. We've planned for an open adoption with a much more appropriate aunt role for me, and I think it will work out, because I obviously don't feel or have a motherly bond. My family is furious, and I'm getting 24-7 calls that I'm selfish, that they'll force me to keep her, and all sorts of empty threats. Am I in the wrong here? Not the idiot. Your family has a very twisted view of adoption. Here's the thing. You became your parents' child and responsibility the day they signed those adoption papers. You are not a charity case. You also have a choice to raise this child, just like you would have the choice if you had given birth to her yourself. You've chosen to give her a life you are not prepared to provide yourself through adoption. Did your parents talk at all about this before? Your mom was around 50, she was going to raise this kid herself. Then when she died, your dad what? Just figured it'd somehow work out. Did anyone ever have a plan? Not that any of this matters for the judgment. You are not the idiot. You don't have a responsibility to this kid. Anyone saying you do, because you were adopted, has only ever seen you as an adopted kid, not family. So don't see them as family either. You are the idiot. 
not for not raising the child, it's not fair that someone not ready for a kid be forced to take care of one, but for the fact that you won't even be bothered to try and save her inheritance for her until she's old enough. I understand that you've had a strained relationship with your parents, but this child had nothing to do with that. And you should be able to understand her situation since you've been in the same situation before, being put up for adoption. What would you do if they return her to the system after taking her inheritance? At least try to think of her as someone needing protection, if not as your sister. My wife and I have a six-month-old baby girl and a two-year-old boy. Wife hasn't been too happy since returning to her job from her last maternity leave, and I actually just got a new job. At my old job I was working 45-50 hours a week. At my new job my hours fluctuate a lot, it can be anywhere from 60 to 80-ish hours a week at the worst. I make a lot more, though so there's that. The pair A's makes it, so my family can do really well on just one paycheck. My wife is ecstatic because this means she can be a stay-at-home mom which is what she's wanted. The issue is that my wife and I aren't on the same page about what this change would mean. Before, when our work hours were almost equal, we divided housework pretty much equally. We also paid a housekeeping staff to come every other week to help us out. Plus we have a nanny to care for our kids while we work. I told my wife that her staying home would mean no more housekeeping staff or nanny. These cuts will help us afford to have just the one income and I also think it's practical. She was mostly agreeable to that. But then she said that we should divide the chores 50-50 still. I told her there was no way I was going to be taking on as many work hours as I am and then come home to cook or clean too. That would defeat the entire purpose of her quitting her job. She looked at me like I was some sort of Neanderthal, but I think what I'm saying is completely fair. I'm not expecting her to do any heavy lifting. Just tending to the kids, cooking, and doing a reasonable job keeping up the house. I recognize that this would be an old-fashioned way of living, and if she ever wanted to return to the workforce, I would support her 100%. But I think it's fair that if I'm the sole paycheck and working crazy hours, I don't come home to more stress and chaos. Obviously my wife and I will have to work this out between ourselves. I'm mainly posting here as a sanity check to see if my thoughts on this issue are completely off base. No idiots here. You both have valid concerns. If I may share some advice that has helped my DH and me balance our work or home workload, worry more about making sure you both have equal free time to relax, rather than an equal workload. Sometimes you just can't make the workload equal for reasons outside your control. And often it's not the chores that cause the resentment, because you'd be doing 100% of it if you were living alone, but the watching somebody get to relax while you're busy working. You are the idiot because you didn't both come to an agreement together about who will do what work inside and outside the home. You told her there would be no more paid assistance, what you would and would not be doing, etc. Maybe she'd prefer to work for pay than to do the tasks you are assigning her as if this isn't a partnership. She deserves say in the budget and such, even if she is not working for pay if her staying at home and taking care of the children is something you both have agreed to. You are the idiot, watching children is exhausting. The people who are saying she'll have breaks obviously aren't stay-at-home parent. And guess what, I'm not either, but I've dealt with my child on my own for weeks at a time due to work trips and on maternity. I feel bad for your wife you would try to pin so much on her. You will have way more mental breaks at your job than any stay-at-home parent does. Plus actual breaks, lunch, chances to talk to adults regularly. If my husband tried to pull this on me we would be headed to therapy.